Welcome to this week's Today's Health and Wellness Podcast. This is Brett. And I'm Ashley. The Today's Health and Wellness Podcast is a joint effort of the Central Ohio Health and Wellness Magazine and Today's Health. In each week's podcast, we spotlight health and wellness stories you'll find in the magazine, on today's health web pages and social media, as well as extras you'll only hear in the weekly podcasts. Thanks for subscribing and hitting the play button. Let's get started. Take Your Dog to Work Day is Friday, June 23rd. We have a really great interview to spotlight this week about an advertising agency in Columbus, Ohio, that has had dogs in their offices for years. It's a really great story. Sue Renninger, managing partner at RMD Advertising, talked with me about the history of how her agency started including dogs in their offices and the effect it has on employees and clients on the day-to-day basis. When you read her bio on their website, she answers the question, in my next life, I want to be Boone, our office dog. She gets so much love, and she's adorable. That pretty much sums up how important dogs are to RMD advertising. Here's the interview. Well, currently we have, I'll say, two and a half uh, canine team members. Uh, Two of them are Great Pyrenees, which are very large dogs. They shed a lot, Um, but their names are Jellybean and Anya. And uh, both are rescue dogs. That's sort of neat, too. Right. And then uh, we have Mr. McNutt, uh, or McNulty, who uh, comes to us every now and again. He's about a fifth of the size of the great peers, and uh, he's pretty feisty and energetic, and uh, it's fun to have all of them around. How did this start at RMD Advertising? You know, I was thinking about that. I'm not really sure. Um, both partners are profound dog lovers. And um, it all started with Boone, who was a rescue border collie and a member of our family for sure. And um, she was the first dog that came to work with me every day. And um, she just fit in right away. We saw amazing benefits of having her there. I loved having her there. And for the longest time, she was the only canine team member. Um, and then other people started thinking, well, maybe I could bring my dog to work. And there was a little of resistance. Change is always hard. It's like, no, this is special. It's just for Boone. Um, but then we started saying, okay, well, maybe we could. Maybe we could allow different dogs in the office. And, um, and we set rules. There's really only two. They, they have to be potty trained, and they have to play well together. Mm-hmm. Uh, pretty much the same kind of rules we have for regular team members. Right, exactly. <laughs> Well, you've had, uh, in going to that end of, you know, uh, employees, team members bringing in their dogs, mm-hmm. how, how does that transition work in regards yeah. to the training and getting yeah. used to it? I mean, one day a week kind of thing, bring them in, or how, did, how does that occur over time? Yeah, we leave it up to the individual team members. Um, when we know a dog is coming in for the first time, we always, of course, assess their energy. Okay. That's real important. Um, uh, for a dog to be here full time, they have to have a certain temperament. Okay. They can't be aggressive, of course. Right. They um, they have to have um, a, a certain level of training. They mm-hmm. have to behave. Um, and uh, so, the first time a new dog is coming into the environment, we're we're always watchful and mindful. Mm-hmm. Uh, dogs know your energy, so you try not to be nervous. But um, Usually the first day a dog will come in, they'll stay with their owner in their office. We don't really shut our doors here, Mm -hmm. Um, but that first couple of days they might be in their office with their door shut or the dog on a leash um, Mm -hmm. near the desk. And that's, you know, that's good for the other dogs and it's good for that dog because they, they need to, they're learning new environments. Dogs can get very stressed. And uh, we don't want anybody stressed at RMD. That sort of defeats the whole idea mm-hmm. of dogs in the office. So, um, and the agency business is stressful enough. So, uh, uh, so yeah, we just um, we acclimate slowly. And uh, sometimes people choose to. It's you know I've heard team members say it's more stressful for me to have my dog here because mm-hmm. I'm nervous about what he or she is doing. Sure, that makes sense. Um, and I always encourage them give it another try, Mister. Mm-hmm. Um, McNutt, McNulty, uh, had a couple of failed attempts before. He, mm-hmm. Now I think Ben is fairly comfortable bringing them in. All right. Do you, um, uh, for your uh, experiences as well as other uh, businesses that you know that have mm-hmm. uh, dogs in the business uh, coming in, you see certain breeds that work better for mm-hmm. this situation than others that you've heard great stories and some horror stories. That yeah. breed probably doesn't work. For yeah. That. yeah. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Um, 
you know, border collies, ironically, are not a good breed to have mm. in the office, typically. Um, they're really smart. They're very, very yeah. smart. And so that's cool. It's neat to have them in the office for that reason. We have lots of success stories. But they're also natural herders. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, they, if they, um, and they're just, as I said, so smart. So they will assess somebody quickly. And if they think that you need to be, you'll hear the dogs barking. I love this. it. Yeah. That's great. Um, they'll uh, herd people, especially new people. So if it's a newer person or even a client or um, maybe a vendor partner that they haven't seen before, uh, they will herd. And they will also, um, herding breeds will also position themselves in between their owner and anybody else. Mm -hmm. And um, that's just instinctive. And so um, ironically, our first office dog was um, that. But for the most part, you know, great peers, aside from the fact that they're as big as a person and um, shed quite a bit, they're a really great office dog because they have amazing temperaments. They are not aggressive and uh, they're protective, but not aggressive. So they bark. Yeah, exactly. Uh, But we just let clients know we are a dog-friendly environment, Mm -hmm. and uh, you might hear a bark during this phone conference, and they usually laugh and say, oh, that's great. (laughs) (laughs) Well, if they're a dog owner, I would think it's like, that's, that's par for the course. That's, that's the right. cost of doing business with the dog. That's <laughs> exactly. right. They're, gonna, they're going yes. to do that. Exactly. <laughs> um, overall, what's the reception been like for clients visiting the office? I know you're, you're telling them ahead of time, expect we have the dogs and on the phone and such. But um, overall, what, how has that been taken? You know, sometimes um, we forget to tell clients and then they show up and they're like, oh, geez. And I'm, I, and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to tell you. And so we're respectful. We always and even people that we're interviewing, for instance, we always say, are you a dog lover? Mm-hmm. And um, most people will say yes, because they think that's the right answer. Um, but um, but we're really trying to be respectful. So mm-hmm. if it's like, yeah, I like dogs, that tells us, OK, go put the dog in an office somewhere and be respectful of the person that's visiting us. Um, But for the most part, our clients um, use that as an opportunity to say, I love dogs, and then they'll tell us about their dog or a dog that had passed, and we share dog stories. And most times the clients will invite the dogs to actually come into the meeting. There's almost always a dog in the conference room. So. Right. They're they're a good part of the party. Yeah, exactly. It sounds great. I was going to say it sounds like a great uh, for a first client coming in as an icebreaker as well as just ongoing conversations right. about dogs and right. such too. So right. that'd be great. Right. Exactly. Um, some examples of of how the, your dog's presence here in the office has been a, a positive influence. Again, I know advertising agencies, lots of tough situations, mm-hmm. stressful jobs, mm-hmm. but um, maybe an example uh, of for the listener to go. Wow, that, that's that's a great example. Maybe we should consider doing that at the office. But what's happened here that it's that's a good example? Yeah, um, there's a big story and a little story I'll share. I mean, the little one is um, the ad agency business is a pre- pressure cooker, and we um, have evolved. We've been around for 25 years, so we've evolved quite a bit in terms of um, temperaments at the agency and what mm-hmm. we tolerate and what we don't, sure. and what we do and what we don't. Um, But recently, uh, somebody was just having a bad day and um, had a, um, I'm going to say an agitated, it wasn't loud, it was just an agitated being Mm -hmm. about them. And uh, their voice had gotten louder and um, they were just having a bad day. And the great peers knew it. And um, it was interesting because the great peers actually migrated over to the conversation. As I was watching them, it was fascinating. They migrated over to it, but you could tell they were cringing and uh, cowering. And um, they were uncomfortable with it. Uh But they wanted to be there to help instinctively, even though it made them very Mm -hmm. uncomfortable. And, you know, when that kind of stuff happens, it's really hard to maintain that same state with those large dogs around sort of cowering and telling you, is everything all right? Yeah. You know, it's really interesting. So it's, it's a state changer for sure. Wow. Um, mm. The biggest story happened when Boone was around and um, uh, we were courting a client, had a couple of cl- conversations, really great guy. We were excited about the account. Mm-hmm. And um, Boone had met him. He had been in the office and she was fine. Well, one day he comes up, and it was to be our last meeting before we close the deal, and he walks into the office, and the second he came into the office, Boone started barking at him and growling. 
Oh my. And I said, Boone. I mean, this was not her. And I said, I don't know what's wrong with her. I'm so sorry. He's like, that's okay. So we went into the conference room and Boone came into the conference room like she did. And, um, it was a contract negotiation and, um, he was, um, he became very heated quickly over the retainer, just mm-hmm. money. Sure. And um, she started growling at him from under the table. And I had to remove her. And this is a very docile dog. And um, it was enough for me to say, what is going on? And so I listened to the gentleman, and we chose not to do business with him. Now, some people would say that's crazy, um, but to listen to a dog, but um, I think that dogs have a different sense about them that humans don't. And I'm not going to say I made the decision based on Boone's opinion, mm-hmm. but it, it certainly made me look at the gentleman differently. And in a, in a service-oriented business, a hyper-service-oriented business like the agency business, you just really have to love the people you work with, clients and team, and um, and have a um, undying respect for them. You really do. Um, you heard me talk about some of our clients before we started. Mm-hmm. And um, if you feel that you can't strike that relationship with somebody, I've learned it's best to, to say thank you, but no thank you. Right. And um, it was interesting. We took this little docile dog who is loved by everybody, and she turned into a meanie in a matter of seconds. And, um, you know, they're just very smart. I, I can imagine... With the culture you've built here, I want to go into a little bit about what RMD Advertising does as well. Mm-hmm. Um, that the culture being a team member, such in, in that example, where the dog sensed that 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 client was not going to be a team member. That's yeah. really interesting. Yeah. Uh, let's talk. He wasn't yeah. going to. He wasn't going to be a good member of the pack. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. The yeah. Pack in in, in in that terminology. Let's go a little bit about RMD advertising history, what, what, what you're doing now, where you've come from uh, in the future, actually. I just want mm-hmm. to give, uh, find out a little bit more about you as well. Yeah. yeah. So um, I always tell clients, once upon a time, you know, we've been around for 25 years. So um, when we first started, we did lots of really wonderful segments. We did healthcare and technology and manufacturing. And my favorite old segment was industrial trash pumps. And uh, it was a lot of fun because it was hard to understand that technology. I can imagine. And I really loved the client as people. And so um, it was always my pet client. But uh, And then we got um, our first food client. And there was no turning back for us. We just knew that's what we were supposed to do. And it's what we loved. And uh, we started only pitching food brands. And then one day somebody said to me... Why are we um, only pitching smaller food brands? Why don't we pitch the Betty Crockers and the Tropicanas and the Lean Cuisines of the world? And uh, it was interesting. She said to me, is it because we're afraid? And I said, I don't know. Let me think about that. And so I sort of thought about it for a while. And I thought, "Eh, there might be some fear there, but that's not it. Um, For us, it's really a love for helping these brands grow. And so we we call them challenger food brands because these are brands that challenge their categories. They usually have larger counterparts um, who have much deeper pockets because their their larger counterparts are usually publicly traded. These are fourth, fifth, sixth um, generation families Mm -hmm. um, who still bring a lot of heart um, to to the category. And we believe in them. And it's a lot of fun when I get up and go to work every day. It's it's a source of pride for me to know that I get to go to work for a family. And right. for me, that means a lot. It means a lot. Well, it sounds as though you've uh, you're matching again that that uh, your philosophy to companies that have the same very yeah. similar philosophy as you do. Yeah. And it can only work yeah. moving forward. Yeah. There's no way it can't. Yeah. <laughs> you know, ultimately, yeah. right. It's been a good model for us. Good, good. What are some tips that you could offer other offices to to start to bring in dogs, maybe once a week or whatever it might be, um, because you've seen so many great benefits of doing it. Yeah. How do you start, and, and, and how long do you stay with it? And said, so what are some tips? Yeah. Um, I'm sort of a both feet in, all at once kind of girl. Okay, all right. And uh, so I would say if you have a... Um, 
you know, if the the leaders of an organization is a great place to start, if they're dog lovers, it won't work unless they are. Right. Um, fish do stink from the head down, so you just gotta <laughs> you gotta you gotta pay attention to that. Um, but if the leaders have a dog and that dog plays well with other people, I would say you know bring them in, uh, make sure it's good for the dog, make sure it's good for the team. Uh, but bring them in and bring them in as many days as it works. Um, we find our dogs pass out on Friday night, and <laughs> because it's a lot of stimulation for a dog, and dogs usually sleep our sleep. That's for sure. They sleep a lot, um, but it's a lot of stimulation. So you, you have to be aware of that too. Um, set the rules. For other team members, if that first dog works, set the team for other team mem- or rules for other team members, and um, uh, let them know that the dog is there to help, not distract. Um, we've never really had to set that rule, but there are times I'll remove dogs from the office because we have a lot of content to cover right away, and maybe they're a distraction. Sure. Um, we have team meetings every Friday morning, and dogs can be a distraction in that. With so many people in the room and the dogs, and so we just sort of have a no dog rule there. Mm-hmm. But you know, you set up rules and guidelines as you go, what fits with your organization, and keeping in mind the overall objective for us is to help our client food brands and help each other. Mm-hmm. And so, dogs or cats or um, birds. Uh, should help that objective, not um, challenge that objective. Thanks again for listening to this week's Today's Health and Wellness podcast, brought to you by Central Ohio Health and Wellness Magazine and Today's Health. If you have a health and wellness segment you would like us to cover, send us an email. Our contact information is in the show notes. And if you'd like more information about sponsoring our podcast, like Ashley just mentioned, our contact information is in the podcast notes. We look forward to hearing from you. Circle 270 Media Podcast Network.